everybody my name is Mark Fisher and this is our channel we want to welcome you to our channel our Scientology stories peeling the onion and this is an introductory video to let you know what our channel is going to be covering and who's involved and and all that sort of thing uh, uh, I've been in Scientology I was in Scientology when I was 14 15 years old uh, as a public person when I was in high school and then eventually I joined the sea organization when I was 18 and then rose to the ranks where I worked directly for David Miscavige the last six years I was in the Sea Org. And then I finally escaped due to the abuses in September of 1990. But we're going to be covering uh, my story, but also I want to introduce my co-host, and that's Janice Gillum-Grady. Hi, Janice. Hi, everybody. Hi, Mark. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Well, I was born into Scientology. Uh, my parents were already in for a few years before I was born, so I grew up in it. Scientology is basically my native language. Um, at the age of uh, 10, we moved to England because Scientology was banned in Victoria, Australia. So in order for my parents to keep practicing, we went to England. And then my mother joined the Sea, Org, or the sea Project from there in 1967. So at the age of 11 years old, I went to the Scientology ship. And at the age of 12, I was one of the first Commodore's messengers. And I remained in Scientology until I was 34 years old, at which point my husband and I, Paul Grady at the time, escaped in the middle of the night. And uh, I've been gone ever since. It's now <laughs> okay. 30, 33 years, going on 33 years. I'm going to show a couple of pictures here, okay? Okay. All right. All right. So who's that? That's my mother. And what um, was her name? Yvonne Gillum Gents. She was married to Peter Gillum. That's my father. And, and my stepfather. There's your that's father. That's my father, Peter Gillum. Many people know him as a very, uh, he was considered one of the best lecturers on the subject of Scientology in the 60s and 70s. I can attest to that. Yeah, and then um, in 1972, 73, my, I think it was 73, my mother married uh, Heber, Heber Jets. Yeah, let me pull up a photograph of them. Okay, and your mother's famous in Scientology for what? She is actually the person who started Celebrity Center in right. uh, 1969. Uh, she started, and here's a picture of Heber on the left. Milton Casales, who was a uh, movie director and uh, acting coach. And then my mother, and then Bobby Lyons, and in front is Pat Waltari. That's right. And then your mother was married to Heber at that time, right? Yes. Yeah. And he was yes. your stepfather, correct? Yes. Heber was my stepfather. Right. And then your your mother, your, she passed away in, what, 1978 or whatever? Yes. January yeah. 1978, she passed away. Yeah, and she's a legend. Both of your parents are legends. I mean, your mother's legendary for setting up the Celebrity Center. I mean, she's so warm-hearted, and the celebrities loved her. And then she set up a whole network of Celebrity Centers all across the country, right? I don't even know if there were international ones or not. Yeah, she did have international ones and a lot across the U.S. She was actually called by, by Hubbard himself. He called her the Celebrity of Celebrities. That's right. And then Heber, of course, you know, later became the president of the Church of Scientology. And, uh, you know, he did that for years and years and years. And he, of course, is still alive and and uh, he's still in Scientology. Isn't that correct? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. OK. And then I was going to show one other picture here of uh, you and your family. This is uh, hold on one second here. I got to find it. We're going to be doing this sort of trial by trial and error people because uh, we're new to this uh, live streaming and and YouTube channel. But this picture here, who's that? Yeah, that's my mom and dad in uh, 1962 and my brother and sister and me in the middle. This You're the is, little uh, one in the middle, right? I'm the little one in the middle that my parents were dropping us off at my grandmother's because she was going to take care of my sister and I while they went to St. Hill for training. Right. Right. Okay. And then I was going to tell you a little bit about myself, um, my history in Scientology. Um, my father got into Scientology um, 
you know, right out of the Navy. He, he had joined the Navy and uh, he was in the Navy for 23 years. And after he retired, he read Dianetics and he got involved in it. And, he, and after about a, six months to a year, we had no idea what he was doing. But then I got, uh, he, he talked me, you know, he thought it would help me as a kid. And so I went in, I think I was 14 or 15 years old and then eventually joined the C organization. And this is a picture here that's me when i was in the c organization that's with my future wife uh, julie catano and uh, we were married for almost seven years but that's a picture of me at the time i don't have a lot of photographs from the time from when i was in the c organization because when i eventually blew and left for good in 1990 security went through and they take every one of your photographs that you have the only reason i have the photographs i have is because there were ones that i'd sent to my family of my wedding and of my wife and that type of thing so you're not going to see a lot of photographs of me but that's me and julie and julie worked with you right yeah, I knew Julie for a long time. She was on the ship with me, actually. Yeah, she was in the Commodore's Messenger Org as well, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then this is a picture of me right here. Hold on, I got to add it. That's me with John Travolta. That's in 1986. That's after L. Ron Hubbard died, and we did the Road to Freedom music album. And I was basically an assistant producer on that album, putting that thing together with all the different songs and everything. And we did it as a tribute to L. Ron Hubbard at the time. Uh, he had actually written these songs, the basic outlines, and then the uh, musicians at Golden Era Studios, they did arrangements, and then we had all of the different celebrities come and participate. Uh, and the idea was uh, L. Ron Hubbard died at the end of January in 1986, and then we wanted to have the album done and produced by uh, March 13th event, March 13th of 1986. So we worked around the clock for 30 days and got everything recorded, uh, the the um, all the uh, artwork done and the uh, album produced and that and this is at the listening party and i'm with john travolta he sang on a couple of the songs and he's he's of course one of the most famous celebrities and just a great guy yes my mother used to deal with him at celebrity center during her days that's right yeah. okay janice and then we've known each other for a long time right oh yeah very long time Wow. Well, actually, I think I remember seeing you in uh, 1976 at the Fort Harrison. Yeah, I joined the Sea Oregon July of 1976, right after I graduated in high school. And uh, actually, David Miscavige was, that's when I met him. He was my roommate. Uh, he had just uh, joined the Sea Org maybe a month or two before that. But um, I don't remember meeting you, but I'm sure that I did. But then I, when I do remember meeting you is uh, later, I saw you in 1980 when you were doing a, a special project uh, for staff uh, page for paying staff members. But then also I remember um, when I finally came to the international, the hidden base, the secret base <laughs> in uh, Gilman Hot Springs in 1981 for training. And that's when I saw you there and you were running at the time, but uh, you were a senior messenger uh, for the Commodore's messengers. And that's when I remember meeting you. And then of course we, uh, we eventually, um, my, my wife, Julie and I shared a two bedroom apartment with you and your husband, Paul, for a while. We, we right. birthed together. As a matter of fact, our stuff was so large. We had a two bedroom apartment with two bathrooms and no one bathroom, I think. And no, then we had a living bathrooms. room. Was two it bathrooms. two? Two bathrooms. Yeah. But the bedrooms were too small. They wouldn't fit my our furniture that my wife, Julie, and I had that was custom made for us. So we slept in the living room. <laughs> That's right. And then you so, had one of those dividers up. So when you come in the front door, there's a divider that's covering you your bedroom. Yeah, but not totally. But it was just funny because that's the way it was in the C organization is like you made do with what you had because there was no way our furniture would fit into the bedroom. So we made right. that our, our sort of lounge area. That was the living room. And then Julie and I slept in the living room and then you you slept in the bedroom. So that, right. that we were that. And then we both left the same day, actually, the day that you left the C organization. Well, I had the same realization and left at the same time. But then I came back because I wanted to get my wife. So I didn't eventually leave until September of 1990. Right. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. And then, yeah. then the funny thing was, is when I left that second time, we left right after this, this famous flood, which we'll go into that story in a future video. But then um, 
uh, I, they told me they made a mistake when they recovered me to come back. And they told me that Janice and her husband, Paul Grady, that they had left that same night too. So then I went, okay, that's a mistake. Cause I went, I'm not crazy. You know, I'm not crazy. So I'm not the only one that thinks that uh, Miscavige is crazy and a nut and I'm not crazy. So the next chance I get, I'm going to leave for good. And that's what happened in September of 1990. Exactly. And you located me, right? Yeah, I located you. I'd heard on the rumor line that you had left. I don't even remember who told me, but I heard. And so I was like, okay, how do I find Mark? And I thought, I will call Julie's family in San Diego. Yeah, because I went down to them. you answered the phone. <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah, Jan, I, uh, I had nowhere to go. I mean, I couldn't go to my family. So, And Julie told me not to go to her family because she wouldn't leave. Basically, they'd turned her against me. We'd been together for almost seven years and never had a, a fight or argument or anything. But anyway, uh, I'll go into that story in more detail later. But basically, they turned her against me. So she said, don't go to my family. So, But I had nowhere to go. So I ended up going down to San Diego. And as soon as I got there, I went on a trip to Hawaii. I just, I had some money. So I, I went to just sort of uh, destimulate and get away from everything. As soon as I got back, the phone rang. I picked it up and it was Janet. She said, hi, is this the Richard Catano who has a daughter named Julie? And I went, Janice, Janice, it's me. Oh, I'm looking for Mark Fisher. That's that's me. That's right. Yeah. And then, and then we eventually, a few months later, we all moved to Vegas. Then we moved to Las Vegas, and then we've been here ever since. And so, yeah. uh, you know, our, we had a lot of interesting adventures and things happen as far as fair game and, and people trying to uh, disrupt our business, private investigators. And we were actually the original, uh, one of the original ones who ever had private investigators sent to Sick Donovan. Isn't that right? Yeah, that's right. Back in 1991. Yeah, that's right. And then, uh, yeah. and then of course that all died down and stuff, but, uh, yeah, we've known each other for quite a long time, but anyway, so we want to tell you a little bit about our channel. Um, it's called our Scientology stories, peeling the onion. And, uh, basically Janice and I, you know, we want to thank Aaron Smith Levin and Mark and Claire Headley and Mike Rinder because, you know, they're, they're doing their channels. Right. And, uh, we started watching them and we did some interviews. I did some interviews with Claire Headley and, uh, Janice did a great interview with Aaron Smith Levin. And it's actually, if you go to our page, we want to ask people, please subscribe to our page, uh, and you'll be getting quite a bit of content from us. But one of the things that both of us, Janice and I, when we were talking is that, you know, a lot of the people that are speaking out and on their channels, they all got involved like at the international base in Scientology around 1990, which is when we left. OK, Mike Rinder was there during that time period, but he was doing other things. And the big thing is that most people, you know, it's on a need to know basis when you're in Scientology and the C organization. You know, one person doesn't know what the other person is doing. So we've been able to compare notes. So a lot of times we'll listen to these stories that these that uh, everyone's telling and we go, well, wait a second, that's not quite correct because we had diff more information that they may not have had. So that's one of the reasons why we decided to do this. Isn't that right? That's correct. Totally. Yeah. Well, and, and that's then, also why I wrote my books. I wrote two books. Yeah. Because I was tired of hearing people make mix things up or not have the correct answers. That's right. And I'm going to show your books right here. You wrote you wrote two books. This is the first book, the cover of the first book. It's called Commodore's Messenger, Book One, A Child Adrift in the Scientology Sea Organization by Janice Gillum Grady. And who's that? That's me. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you That's, walking with? I'm with L. Ron Hubbard, the founder of Scientology. And, and me, where are you? We're on the A deck quarter deck of the Apollo or the Royal Scotsman as it used to be called, but its name was later changed to Apollo. Uh -huh. And okay. uh, that's me as one of the original Commodore's messengers. Okay. And how old do you think you were there? You know, I was probably about 13 there. About um, 13 years old? Yeah. Sylvia Calhoun took the picture and she was the LRH photographer and public relations at the time. And yeah, we were going down below deck and, he was going down to see someone and Sylvia happened to be on deck with the camera. And so she was like, oh, great. Let me get this picture. Yeah. And for yeah. those viewers who don't know the history of Scientology or, you know, watch other YouTube channels and all that, uh, the Commodore's Messenger, uh, he had a group of kids, basically, that uh, he used to send them around the ship, right, to deliver messages because it was yes. a big ship. Right. And Janice, Janice, is, you weren't, were you the original or you were one of the original? 
I'm one of the original. Um, the very first night, Quentin went on for three hours, and then I replaced him, and then... Quentin I Hubbard, was, that was LRH's son. Yes, and then I, I became consistent, and then we had other people, and I finally managed to get myself replaced. I was the director of communications, and then um, they, he wanted me back, and I didn't want to go back. But I was told I had no no choice in the matter. So I ended up going back. And I ended up being with him close to six hours a day for the next 11 years. On and off, you know, I might take a leave or go on mission. But most of the time, I was with him six hours a day uh, for the next 11 years. And we're talking almost every day of his life during that time period, right? Yes, yeah, I mean, Janice was probably closer to L. Ron Hubbard than some of his family members, spending more time with him on a daily basis. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and you you were involved with all of that. Whatever he was working on, the messengers on duty would actually assist him in that. Isn't that right? Yeah, we would assist him or we'd run messages or, you know, to help on whatever it was he was working on. Right. And then, of course, your sister, your sister also was a messenger, right? Yes. Yeah. You know, the, the four originals, you know, what they were called the originals, though there were others that, you know, they did short periods of time. Uh, but the originals were the four of us who were there for consistently for the next two years when three more messengers were added to make us seven. But that right. was myself, my sister Terry, Claire Popham, and Annie Broker or Annie Tidman. And right. we, were, we were always referred to as the original four. Right. And then you were basically referred to as senior messengers because you were basically the originals. Uh, later on, there'd be other uh, people who came and joined the Commodore's Messenger Org, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. We were senior messengers and we trained the rest. And then we made more senior messengers because uh, Gail and Dee Dee became senior messengers as well. Right. You know, over the years, you know, the, over the next 11 years type of thing. And then Shelly Miscavige also, she came on the ship too. And she was a messenger, right? Yeah, she was a messenger in training on the ship, mm -hmm. and um, and then later on she was a junior messenger, but she never made it to be a senior messenger. Right, right. And then my 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 future wife uh, Julie Catano, she also was a junior messenger on the ship as well. Correct. Yes. Yes. Yeah, correct. She was a junior Lisa. messenger on the ship. Right. Right. And then David Miscavige was never on the Apollo, the flagship Apollo. Isn't that right? Correct. And, I, you know, I've seen some people comment that they remember him on the ship. And no, he was never on the ship. He right. joined the Sea Org in April 1976. Right. Um, yeah. And we'd already been land based for at least eight months by that point. Right. Right. That's correct. Let me show you. This is uh, the cover to Janice's book, two. OK. And that uh, that's uh, book two, Commodore's Messenger. And it says, uh, was to say riding out the storms with L. Ron Hubbard, Janice Gillum Grady, and wh where is that picture taken? You know that one was in Setúbal, Portugal. Uh, we were going to a a winery, a wine winery vineyard vineyard. <laughs> yeah. uh, we were going there to for him to do a photo shoot, and uh, he was talking to our ship's chandler Manuel at the time when that photo was taken. Right. Right. And then uh, how old do you think you were there? Um, I think I was 17 there. 17 years old. And then he's yeah. he's got his camera work and all that. Now, when you guys would go on photo shoots as messengers, uh, you know, what were what were some of the duties that, that you all had to do with? Sometimes we'd load the cameras for him. We'd hold up the flash. You can see in my hand, I actually am holding a flash gun in that picture. Right. And right. uh, hanging off my shoulder was the bat battery pack for it. Right. And then you guys also, I mean, this is very minor, but you guys also would uh, light his cigarettes or hold his cigarettes for him or his ashtray. Isn't that right? We'd he'd hold the ashtray. He'd have his own, he'd keep his own cigarettes in his, in his right hand uh, pant pocket. Right. And, Unfiltered uh, cools, right? Unfiltered cools, cools. non-filtered cools. Non-filtered cools, menthol. Yes. And we the would have a... Um, a lighter or he'd have a lighter and sometimes we'd light it sometimes he'd light it but yeah, when we went out on deck would carry the uh ashtray so that the ashes didn't you know blow off around right. the ship or whatever 
Yeah, and then somebody asked him the story, famous story that uh, uh, somebody asked him, why does he fi- uh, smoke unfiltered cools? And he said, because they impinge. And impinging in Scientology means it's got punch. In other words, you're hitting the point. So it's like, so why do you smoke unfiltered cools? Because they impinge. <laughs> and, and they do. If you ever tasted them, it's like, oh, gag. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's that's true. And uh, anyway, the, these two books, uh, Commoner's Messenger, book one and book two, the, it's available on Amazon.com. And uh, you can click on the links on our channel. We've got links to both if you want to order the books. Um, I want to tell you something. They're very comprehensive. Janice goes into detail into a lot of stories about L. Ron Hubbard and about being on the flagship Apollo from the age of 12 until, you know, they eventually uh, went ashore. And then book two covers when you were, um, covers when, when, I know it ends when you guys actually arrive at the flag land base. Is that right? Yes. Well, no, it ends when we, we move off the ship. It does not cover right. the arrival into America. That's the start of my third book. Uh, right. Coming to America is the start of the third book. That ends That's... when we leave the ship. Right. And, right. and it starts where we, book one finishes where we had just sailed out of a big storm up in the Azores and uh, we were lucky to sail out of there alive. <laughs> <laughs> but, so that's where book one ended. And so book two picked up from there. And so it still covers uh, like 1970 to 1975 is book two. Right. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, let me let me go over like our channel. What we're going to do is, um, you know, we're going to tell stories that you haven't heard uh, and more details. And it's not it's not that we're putting down anybody else's stories because everybody's got their own stories. We're also not, you know, look at people. We're not here to bash the religion of Scientology or the, you know, that type of thing. If somebody wants to believe in Scientology, more power to them. But we are going to cover some of the abuses and some of the things like the disconnections that happen with families and the uh, fair game tactics because they they happened to us for over 20 years, okay? So we'll be covering a lot of that stuff in detail from a different perspective. But one of the things I know that we want to cover is, you know, more of the day-to-day, you know, stories about L. Ron Hubbard because you, like I said, you you work closely with them on a daily basis. And a lot of things are not known. Isn't that correct? Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. But also, uh, we're going to also tell stories about David Miscavige because, uh, Janice, you were there when he first got into into uh, the Commodore's Messenger Org and then yes. all through his time up until when you left in 1990. And then I also I worked for I rose to the point where I actually worked for him. I actually set up and ran his office at the Gold Base at the secret base at Gilman Hot Springs for the last six years that I was in the Sea Organization. And I dealt with him just like you dealt with Hubbard. I I dealt with him on a daily basis during those six years whenever he was at the gold base and the international base. And uh, I handled all of his domestic, you know, uh, things that he needed as far as his living, living and cleaning and that type of thing. And I had a whole staff for him. So I was very close to him in terms of how he was, how he was uh, uh, dealing with things and also was intimately involved and at the, around at the time when he took over after L. Ron Hubbard died and uh, he managed to get rid of the, the other people that were involved uh, that were uh, supposed to basically run Scientology, right? And you were around yeah. that time period too, right? Yeah, I was, but I wasn't so close around him like you were, but yeah. I was I was definitely there at that time. And also, just so people know, we'll go into detail on this. The way he's running Scientology and the, the things that he's done is not the way that L. Ron Hubbard wanted. You know, there's a lot of times people will say, oh, LRH died without a will, and he didn't really say, you know, how he wanted Scientology run. That's incorrect, right, Janice? Correct. He did leave instructions on how everything was to be set up, and we will go into that. That's great. Other things that we're going to cover is, you know, uh, in future videos, okay, life on the Apollo, flag land base, the international secret base. There were several bases that were secret, right? Uh, Stories about Hubbard, stories about David and Shelley Miscavige. Uh, We're going to talk about how DM took over and uh, what was Hubbard's plan. 
uh, growing up in Scientology in the Sea Organization. We're going to talk about your mother and your, and her, what she did as far as Scientology and setting up celebrities in the Celebrity Center. I've got your father, who was a, like you said, he, he was a mission holder and also a lecturer and then a nutrition specialist. And that he, he did that up and, you know, all the way through until he, he passed away recently, right? Yeah, at 93 years old. Yeah. Yeah. And he's yeah. a great guy. I met him when I was 16. I did one of his lectures when I was 16 years old and I, he blew me away. I, I, I told him to his face, I said, you know, you're a legend. You know, I, one time I, I took a picture of him recently when we were on a cruise together and he goes, I, I asked him, can I take a picture of you? And he goes, why would you want to do that? And I said, because you're a legend. <laughs> <laughs> he laughed and he let me he, he, he loved being called a legend. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to talk about him. Uh, we're going to talk about Heber, Heber okay. Dennis, your stepfather. Uh, we're going to go into detail about Pat and Annie Broker. Okay. Because okay? I know you know, you've known Annie since she joined the Sea Organization. Since, She's no longer yeah. alive. Since but, we were both uh, we were 12 years her. old. And then Pat Broker. I mean, a lot of people don't know a lot about Pat Broker. Okay. And there's a lot of uh, false information and incorrect information out there in terms of you know, his connection with Hubbard at the end and, and was he really supposed to be running Scientology? And we're going to be going into that to videos that we're going to be doing. Right. And then um, we're also going to go into like various programs that L. Ron Hubbard developed, like the running program, the purification rundown, um, key to life. I mean, all these things I did as pilots. I mean, we were basically guinea pigs on these things, right, Janice? But yes, correct. <laughs> yeah, I was the first running program. The first person. running program, yeah, and I I did the running program in Griffith Park, you know, and uh, was on it for fifty one days, and we'll go into details about that. And a lot of these things were developed because he wanted to deal with the staff, the staff that were that were that were working on the uh, movies and stuff with him. You know, he thought they were idiots and druggies and, you know, whatever. So he developed yeah. a lot of things. And now Scientology sells it to the to the public as a public rundown. Well, uh, on the running program, that actually came about, he said, to make me get out and run because I was disaffected. He was being told how disaffected I was. And David mm -hmm. Mayo sent up a report after me doing a whole handling that David had to oversee. He sent up a report saying she's was disaffected she's no longer disaffected but there's no guarantee she won't be disaffected in the future and uh, <laughs> that was the start of the running program yeah and we'll go into details on that because it turned into a punishment miscavige turned it into a punishment yeah um and uh and that was like you know make people go run and and do different things like that when actually hubbard you know hubbard actually planned the running program as an actual process something that would actually help people um, and then we're also going to go into the abuses of Scientology and, and why we finally left because we okay. had signed billionaire contracts and, you know, we were dedicated and then why was it that we left? And we'll go into uh, stories about that. We're also going to go into stories about disconnection because I, I lost connection with my sister when I left Scientology and I know, uh, others, you know, many other people who had that happen to them and, and, uh, and about that. And also fair game and harassment. We, we were the original people who had private investigator Dave LeBeau sicked on us and uh, you know that type of thing and we'll go into stories about that and many many more okay right. and we're gonna we're gonna many many more listen I want to ask people please subscribe to our channel we're new at this uh, but we're gonna be trying to put out a, a video at least once a week and uh, we're gonna try and keep them short so that way you can listen to them or watch them in, in a short period of time right and yeah. then also just so people know you know you can watch our videos but also if you've got you know Bluetooth or whatever you actually can listen to them there's no reason that you have to listen to it as a podcast you can actually listen to it on your phone while you're driving or whatever if you don't want to see the visuals and just just listen on YouTube itself so I just want to let people know that but please if you would click the subscribe button and the like like our like our video and uh, also we want to ask uh, mention too uh, if you've got questions please ask in the comments below. Okay. We're going to, um, we're going to eventually be doing live chats like you see with uh, Mark and Claire and Mike and Aaron. Um, but for the time being, if you want to ask any questions, just put them in the comments below and then Janice and I will answer them on the next video. If there are important questions and things like that, we'll go ahead and answer them for you. So you're not going to be forgotten. So I just right. wanted to make that clear, right, Janice? Yeah, and, and we will also do some live ones where they can ask while we're and just do a live chat with us as well. 
Yeah, exactly. And plus it refreshes our memories. You know what I mean? We, we went through a lot. We know a lot of detailed information that has not been put out there. And uh, so if, if you're interested in finding out about it, please subscribe to our channel. And like I said, if you have any questions, please ask in the comments section uh, below. Anyway, I just wanted to mention, uh, we want to thank you all for viewing and ask, and uh, and watching. And uh, we'll be doing these videos soon, and you'll be seeing a, a new one really shortly. But uh, meanwhile, Janice, I just wanted to say thank you for, you know, doing the channel with me. Oh, you're welcome, Mark. I'm looking forward to this. I think this will be fun. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I really look forward to getting some truth out there. That's right. And like I said, please uh, subscribe to our channel and uh, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button and add comments. It'll help us get the word out there. And uh, until the next time, we want to say thank you for watching and we'll see you soon. Bye bye. Right. Bye. Thank you. Hold on. I'm going to show this. There we go.